In this lesson, we'll perform kind of a code cleanup and code automated check. And this is described by the client with this point, usage of PHP CS Fixer and Laristan R plus. And PHP CS Fixer has a Laravel wrapper on top of that, which is called Laravel Pint, which is exactly what we'll use in this lesson. So this will be kind of two in one lesson, but both will be pretty short and I decided to mix it into one video. And in the text version of this lesson, I will give more links to other resources that we have on Pint and Laristan separately. But for now, what you need to know is Laravel Pint is a wrapper on top of PHP CS Fixer. It's a first party package Laravel Pint. And it's a constant debate in Laravel community and in PHP community which to use, the original PHP CS Fixer or Laravel Pint. Similarly to Laristan, you will see in a few minutes, those make it easier to install the underlying tools in Laravel projects with just a few terminal commands. So that's why we will use Laravel Pint here. And what it does, it searches your code scans your code for any code styling issues like missing spaces, missing gaps between lines, unused imports and stuff like that. Those are not errors, but if you use the same code styling within your team with your other teammates, it would minimize the surprises and the questions why some space or some code line is written differently by other teammates. You just run Laravel Pint or PHP CS Fixer before committing the code, and then the team use the same style to be on the same page. So let's install Laravel Pint in our application. I just copy and paste it into the terminal. And all we need to do, we don't even need to configure anything by default. That's the beauty of Laravel Pint versus PHP CS Fixer. We just need to run vendor bin pint. For the first time, I advise you to run that with a flag dash dash test like this, because if you run it vendor bin pent like this, it will change your file automatically. For the first time, you may want to not change the files, but test what are the errors without changing the exact files. So we run that with test, and we will see that there are a few things not ideal in a few files. And behind the scenes, I have already fixed it and committed the code, so I will show you the exact changes on GitHub and the reasons for them. So first, or in fact, let's take it from the beginning. So what Pint found is this is not used in the controller and I just forgot to remove it and it is called no unused imports rule. Another thing is there's no point to have return array if we use array here. And another thing what Pint suggests is to have comma after the last array item. Over the years, I found it pretty convenient to have always the comma so it would be more convenient to add more array items in the future. And finally, according to the code styling rules, the imports the uses should be in alphabetical order. So this is exactly what is happening here. From the top, brought here, to be in alphabetical order. That's it, nothing really fancy, nothing really special. And even if you don't obey those rules, your code would still work. Laravel Pint just makes code styling identical or as close as possible to your teammates if they use the same code styling rules. And speaking of code styling rules, Laravel Pint has configuration of so-called preset of rules called Laravel, but you can change that easily to preset popular PSR standard of PSR 12, or there's also Symfony as an option, or you can override some rules, add the rules, enable, disable, exclude files or folders. Quite a lot of things are configurable in either Laravel Pint or underlying PHP CS Fixer. And the second tool we'll use to kind of clean up our code is Laristan. It's also a wrapper on top of PHP stand, and this is for static analysis. So Laravel Pint and PHP CS Fixer takes care of code styling, so how it looks, and Laristan and PHP stand try to find errors or potential bugs if something is missing in your code structure, so how the code works. For example, if you define the property and make a typo without running the code and without running the automated test, Laristan would point that out to you. And there are different levels of check that you can set up. And I will just demonstrate with the default level how it works and what it can detect. In this case, it's not an official first party package like Laravel Stan or something, but it's created by Nuno Maduro, Laravel team member. So you could consider it almost official first party. But also 
It's an open debate whether you want to use PHP STAN, and there are more static analysis tools in PHP. Again, in the text version of this lesson in the course, I will link to more resources about that. So to install Laristan, almost the same as Laravel Pint, just compose require and just run one command. But in this case, we need to add some configuration. So we need to create a file called phpstan.neon. Even the file is phpstan, not laristan. So the configuration is actually of phpstan and laristan makes it just easy to work with that in Laravel. So let's just do vim phpstan.neon paste, close, and that's it. And now let's see what Laristan detects by running PHP stan analyze. Copy that, paste here, and we run, and we see 35 checks, some percentage, done. And do we have any errors? We have 11 errors. That may scare you from the beginning, but actually, don't worry, it's about the same error, which is actually even optional. So sometimes those static analysis tools have so-called false positives, kind of warning you about something, which is actually working well. So in this case, Laristan is complaining about the same thing in API resources of Eloquent. We use this ID, this name, or this other variables, but they are not defined in the Eloquent API resource itself. So Laristan doesn't figure out where they come from, which may be potentially a bug, but it's actually covered by Laravel so-called magic of Eloquent API resource. So in here, you have a few choices, either fix it or ignore it. And I will show you both. So if we open that travel resource, these are the problems. So this, even PHP Storm underlines that, we don't know what this is. And this actually is a travel model. And one of the ways to tell that to Laristan is to provide a comment here. One of the syntax options is, star here, mix in, and we need to provide the class path, which is app, models, and travel here which tells that this class is present. In fact, Laristan provides not only with the error in PHP stand, but with the link to read more about various ways to solve that problem. And here we're using the mix in, but there are other ways depending on your PHP version. But now if we rerun the analyze again, we should have fewer errors. Instead of 11, we have six errors. So we fixed the error of not knowing what this is, for all those properties in the travel resource, except for one. This one still state as error because number of nights is not defined as a property in the model. So we do use travel model here for this, but number of nights is a special accessor. So you can use some syntax to define that in the model, or you can define this as a special property. So another syntax is property integer number of nights. And now if we rerun analyze again, we should have five errors, hopefully. Yep, exactly that. And the final thing, we can do the same thing in the tour resource. So let's open tour resource and let's paste that comment. But in this case, we don't need the property and mix and model would be models tour. And then if we run it again, then it should be clear without any errors. Exactly. Okay, no errors. But maybe you don't want to provide additional dog blocks and you want to tell Laristan and PHP Stan to ignore some rules in some files. For example, if you don't have to resource mix in here, in PHP Stan Neon, it's even commented out, you can ignore some errors. So we uncomment this. And in our case, I will paste it from my notes. We need to ignore the error, access to the undefined property with the regular expression in those specific folders. So we save that, rerun analyze, and it should be still without errors, although we removed the mix in from the files. So this is another option. You can fix the errors by providing some data to Laristan or ignore some rules in some files or folders. So now the code of our project is a bit more clear with random small things fixed. But of course the project is really small. For a bigger project, you would use Laravel Pint, Laristan and other tools with more things they would potentially notify you about. And your choice would be 
whether to fix them or not. In the final lesson, we will take care of the documentation for our project.